Hi, hello besties, and welcome back to my channel. Guys, I am so freaking excited because I just came out of my postpartum checkup where they like check everything, they do a whole exam, and I am cleared for all activity, and I am so freaking excited because that means I get to work out. Obviously, I am going to be easing back into it in moderation, but I cannot wait. I am literally on my way to my parents house that is where AJ is right now my mom was watching him while I was at my appointment so I'm literally on my way there now I'm going to go I'm gonna feed him and then I brought gym clothes with the hope that I was going to get cleared so I am going to change into them and my parents have some like dumbbells bands and things like that in their basement and so I'm going to bang out a quick workout because oh my god I am so freaking excited to be able to work out again you guys have no idea obviously like exercise is just so important to me mentally it literally has absolutely nothing to do with the physical aspect of it. it has nothing to do with how I look it has nothing to do with being insecure or wanting my like pre-pregnancy body back it literally has absolutely nothing to do with that it is just going to feel so good mentally to feel quote-unquote normal again because this is what I was doing every single day literally up until the point that I gave birth so I am just so excited for it I feel like I am going to be so incredibly sore afterwards but feel so good but let me tell you guys I forgot when you go to these OBGYN appointments that literally you will sit there for 15, 20, 30 minutes naked in your gown because they don't care about you. They're running around doing a bunch of other things where when you're pregnant, they are you get in and out of there in 15, 20 minutes. But for this time, I literally sat there for 20 minutes before they even came in and evaluated me. But they did a full exam. They checked everything. They said everything is healing up perfectly, which is awesome. So I feel really, really good about all of that. The only thing that I personally had like concerns about and this is TMI, so like, sorry if you don't care, but having like bowel movements, like going poop has been a little uncomfortable since giving birth, like to the point that it just kind of feels like there's like cuts down there sometimes. So when I'm pushing, it just feels a little uncomfortable. It doesn't feel like I'm straining, but I do think a big part of it, honestly, is a lot of time when I'm pooping, it's not like a relaxing environment. Like I'm trying to go as quick as possible because AJ is crying in the other room. So I definitely think that's a huge factor to it as well, but it just like hasn't been the most comfortable experience. And it does definitely kind of feel like there's like some cuts down there and she said that's totally normal like fissures after pushing so hard like you do when you're in childbirth so she said that they should all heal up on your on its own but nothing looks wrong it just might be more internal so just to give it a little bit longer and then if they don't go away then to reach out but really there's nothing you can do for that no like stool softeners laxatives she said like if as long as you can go like I'm not constipated so as long as you're going nothing to be super concerned about but it's definitely not been the most comfortable experience and for me that's kind of been the worst like postpartum symptom has been going to the bathroom like going poop because that has been the most uncomfortable thing but she said everything looks great I'm healing up perfectly so she said I am cleared for all activity and I am just so freaking excited about it so I'm all the way back to my parents house now I'm gonna go back I'm gonna feed AJ and then we are going to get our first workout in postpartum um
guys that workout was literally amazing it felt just so freaking good to move my body i am going to be so sore literally i did six seven i did seven exercises and all of them were either body weight or light weight and it just felt so He is so dramatic. I, he's literally laying right there. I can see him. He's perfectly fine. It literally just felt so good to move my body and to do take an hour for me and to exercise and just to get back into it. I know that it is going to be a slow process. I know that I'm not going to be able to just like jump back into it and lift the same amount of weights that I did before. And honestly, I just... It, I don't care about any of that. I'm actually really excited for this process and this journey of my postpartum recovery of getting back into it. It's a new thing that I've never put my body through before and I'm really excited to become the newest, best, strongest version of myself. I am just really, really happy about it and I'm just so excited and honestly the fact that I am away on vacation next week is a really good thing because all we're gonna bring with us is lightweight bands and our body weight and so it's gonna be the perfect week to like ease my way back into it where if I was here and I had access to the gym I would probably unintentionally overdo it just because that's kind of how I am and it's just that's just the reality that's kind of just the truth at this point but honestly that's what i spent a good portion of the day doing the appointment my workout and then i did have a business call for something that i am super super excited about and i hope pans out and works perfectly because you guys know that i've kind of just been unsure of what my work looks like after I get off my maternity leave. It's really important to me to have something part-time so I can be with AJ as much as possible. I don't plan on putting him in daycare. I'm super fortunate that my mom did decide to retire from teaching and so she is going to be watching him part-time. The other half I'm going to be with him. So now I just need to figure out what makes the most sense financially of course but also from a career and job perspective that I can be making enough money for what to and I need to be able to like sustain and do well but also what makes the most sense for us and our family at this point and I think we figured out like the perfect solution so I had an awesome call today and I'm just so excited about it and I cannot wait to hopefully share it with you guys very very soon but baby man needs to get his diaper changed and eat go figure our two-hour window has passed so we're gonna go do that now I quite literally feel like I smell like milk 24 7 like I literally feel like I non-stop smell like milk on myself I literally asked Timmy a little bit ago like do I smell like milk and I bet I do because this is what I deal with all day long just I think just between him eating and getting and then spitting up on me and then also just like leaking like I literally just feel like I smell like milk 24 7 so that's where I'm at at this point we're gonna do your vitamin D drops Oh, do you like the way it tastes? Yeah, baby. Time for the milky before bed. Guys, I am so freaking sore this morning. It is unreal. My legs hurt literally so bad. They hurt so bad. I cannot. Like, literally, I did two exercises. I did squats and I did lunges. And they literally feel like I did an entire leg day. It is crazy how much of a difference taking a month off and your body going, obviously, through something, like, pretty pretty wild can make. It is actually insane. So we are up this morning. We are in a good mood this morning. So let's hope that that lasts. Like you guys know, he is a major, major contact napper. And... I am like trying to get him a little bit better and kind of just like laying here on his own without having to be held 24 seven. But I'm trying to just like be close by and be touching him. And like, he's always kind of feeling me that I'm here, but I don't really know honestly how that works. Like for parents that had contact nappers, like when did they transition out of that where they could sleep a little bit more independently during the day? Like at night, 
we swaddle him and he literally sleeps fine without us but during the day we haven't been swaddling him and that's kind of my choice and our choice because we want him to be able to differentiate between night and day. So we're keeping him kind of like this and like loose and we'll put like, we'll kind of wrap him in a little blanket if we're holding him and he's a little chilly. But at night we really swaddle him and like make him nice and bundled and compact. And that way I'm hoping he can tell the difference between night and day. Also like we keep the lights very dark at night during the day. We don't try to be quiet. We keep all of like the lights on. Like we just try to make sure that he can tell the difference. And he naps really, really well during the day, but pretty much only right now if he is attached to somebody else. And I know that's totally normal. And I literally love his contact naps and like baby snuggles more than anything in the world. Bless you. Bless you. One more. Bless you. One more. Oh, thank God. Three would have been, four would have been way too many. Love his snuggles more than anything in the world. But I'm just curious, like at what point do they start kind of transitioning out of contact naps? Do they ever transition out of it? Obviously, like they're not going to be 18 years old. You're still going to be holding them if they take a nap. But like, how do you start the process of transitioning them out? What I keep reading is that like starting around like two, two and a half months, if you want to do it, you can kind of have them try to like take some naps in their crib during the day and kind of just like lay them down a little bit. Like, do they eventually just kind of grow out of it? Like, is there a good way of doing it so that way they don't just cry and cry and cry and eventually they get used to it because I don't think I'm going to be very good at the whole like cry it out method because if, if he starts crying I feel so bad I literally feel like the world's worst parent even if I put him in the bassinet and I know he's safe and I'm getting ready I am like oh my god what if something happens to him like I just panic so I don't think I'm going to like the cry it out method so I'm like is there a good transition where I can lay him down even in his bassinet right next to me or in his crib during the day to transition out of contact naps eventually like I'm not rushing it at all I love his naps but it also would be nice during his nap times to like get some things done during the day eventually so like i'm just not really sure how that process works and i'm also not sure when a, an appropriate time to kind of move him to his own room is i know some parents do it out, like at six months and some people do it at a year and some people do it at 18 months i also know some people started as early as like two two and a half months so same thing if you did this is something you did if this is something you did kind of like let me know in the comments like what you did like what was the technique you guys used how did the transition go for you guys because are you listening to mommy talk because i'm just really curious like it's something that i think within the next month or two is something that we would want to try out even if it's not the entire night just for part of the night and i don't know a good way to do that so he's as happy as possible okay we we'll snuggle we snuggle we snuggle see oh i have to make sure my hair is back all the time because now he's grabbing hair so that adds a whole element to our dynamic. I know that that's something that Timmy and I would like to do, especially once I go back to work in about a month or so, but I don't know the best way of doing it and I don't know if he's gonna be doing it full time. So I'm just really curious how other people did it and what your stories were, how your processes works. I just wanna do whatever is best for him, of course, but also what makes the most sense for us. Like if he's gonna be screaming all night long in his crib, in his room, and we're not gonna be sleeping either, I would rather him just sleep comfortably in the bassinet next to us. You know what I mean? Like, I just want to do what makes the most sense for all of us. So let me know, when did your kids transition out of contact naps? And also, how did you transition your kids into sleeping in their crib instead of in a bassinet next to your bed? Because he's not getting... Like, I don't want to rush this process, and I love him being so close and snuggly and sleeping next to us. I just, like, want to make sure that I do the best thing for him and for us transition-wise into, like, this next days once we get there whenever that time frame is also do all moms like just low-key have carpal tunnel because it's a contact napper i literally hold him almost all day whether i baby wear him or i hold him like this and i think i hold him a lot on my left side because for every reason that's just what that is just more comfortable and then i can i'm right-handed so i can like do things with my right hand it's okay it's okay no 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 it's okay but because i'm holding him like this all day long my wrist literally oh okay. but this is what i mean by fighting sleep we are we've played and now it's time for us to take our morning nap and we're fighting it i promise you we won't have any fun if you go to sleep we won't have any fun without you i'll be so sad i won't do a single thing my wrist, the way I'm holding him, unless I need to mix up the way I hold him, my wrist is always kind of bent like that. And so it literally hurts so bad. Like I have to like stretch out my wrist in between the times that I'm holding him because I'm literally always holding him like that. And it's just, it's just painful. Also, 
The downside to being so active and moving my entire pregnancy is that now the only way he likes to fall asleep for the most part is when I'm rocking him and I'm up and I'm walking around and I'm pacing. So like we get lots of steps in in the house, but like he really does not, he won't just like sit with you and you can pat him to sleep. Like he wants to be rocked like this and walked around. And I think it's like just because I moved around so much when I was pregnant that now he just enjoys movement to put him to sleep. So All day today we have been getting ready for our vacation that we go on tomorrow with my family we are heading down to the beach and definitely it is more difficult getting ready now for vacations and for trips and just getting out the door with a newborn as a whole the process is just so different now like before I used to be able to make a list for myself Timmy used to be able to make a list for himself we would pack for ourselves and then we would be good to go like we really didn't have a ton of other responsibilities but now even when we're getting out the door for like an hour trip it takes us so much longer because it all goes based around his schedule so it's like okay before we get out the door we want to make sure we change his diaper we want to make sure we feed him we want to make sure the diaper bag is packed make sure we have extra outfits extra this extra that so it's even more difficult just getting out the door for an hour trip never mind a week long trip and it's the first time that we are traveling anywhere overnight with him and so while he doesn't need that much right now like literally all he needs is on a day-to-day -day basis is outfits diapers wipes and then food, which I supply right now. We, he really doesn't need that much else. Like he doesn't need toys to play with. Like He's literally like a potato other than that. He needs a place to sleep when we have our pack and play with us. So he really doesn't need a ton, but it is the first time that we have gone away overnight with him. And so it's just a little stressful packing for all of the things because it's like, how many outfits is he gonna go through in a week? Like, yes, of course we can do laundry, but you don't wanna have to do laundry like every other day that you're down there. So it's like, how many outfits do we think he's gonna go through in a week? Then we have to pack swaddles, we have to pack burp rags, and then it's like okay we've never been gone before like what if we need to check his temperature we want to make sure we have a thermometer we want to make sure we have that little sucky thing for his nose in case he gets some buggers like it's just so many things to think about and like I am a chronic overpacker by nature like I feel like you're either one of two extremes you're either a chronic overpacker or when you have way too much like you pack for all of the extreme situations like literally I will pack as if I'm going to be gone for a month and I will have enough clothes to sustain me for that long like I pack clothes for events that don't even exist when I go away on vacation like just in case like you're either one of those people or you are such an underpacker that you always forget something you were like oh my god like you like forget your toothbrush or you forget like socks or forget like underwear like something that like or you're going to the beach and you forget like bathing suits like something so obvious I feel like you're one of two extremes when it comes to packing and I am certainly an overpacker and so I'm really trying this time to not be an overpacker because my family on our family vacations we don't do a ton of things like some people will go mini golfing or they'll go walk around the town or they'll go out to dinner like my family doesn't do any of that like we will make dinner at home every single night we literally will wake up I will work out so I need workout clothes then we'll change into a bathing suit we'll go down to the beach we'll spend all day down at the beach and then we'll come back and we will make our dinner and we'll be in the house the rest of the night like we literally do not do anything and I am like super appreciative of that because it makes it that much easier to pack for and regardless of all that I am sure that I still overpacked but I really tried this year but it is just so much more stuff and so much more to think about just now having him because we are accounting for a whole nother human being like we are driving down separately this year which will be so nice because we can literally like load up our own car and bring as much as we want and not have to feel bad that we're sharing the space with like the rest of my family. I am really excited for vacation. It is always so nice to spend an entire week just with my family and be able to just like all be together and me in one spot. My nephew will be there. All of my siblings minus my sister who is having the twins in a few weeks will be down there and it's going to be so weird just not having them down there. Her and my brother-in-law but obviously it's for a really really good reason and so next year it's going to be even more exciting How even having even more little babies on the trip. I am very much in the mindset that like yes having a baby does entirely change your entire life around but with things like this in my opinion for things like this especially something that we can try to that's close you do not need to stop your entire life like it is going to be so nice to be down at the beach with my family we are going to literally have so much help and so many hands the entire week that we are down there like I just think it is so important to continue to do some quote-unquote normal things if you are able to and you have the means to be able to do so because I think it's really good for you as parents but also like for the baby to adapt to your normal life well like yes so many things and so many factors 
years of your life are so entirely different. I also don't need, think you need to sacrifice all of the things that you love. And I, like I said to you guys in the last vlog, it can be so difficult feeling like you are giving 110% of yourself to this baby, even though it is the most amazing thing in the entire world, it is also the most selfless thing in the entire world. So I'm really, really excited for this next week to be doing something that I genuinely love, which is going down to the beach with my family. And even though it will be an entirely different trip, but I won't be able to like go down to the beach and lay down there all day, every day, like I used to be able to do, I'm just really, really excited to like be able to take a moment and do something that I love and be able to work out with my sisters and be able to go lay in the sun and be in a bathing suit and just enjoy myself for a week because I feel like it's so important to take time for yourself even as new parents. So here's your reminder if you needed to hear it to do something for yourself today. Make sure that you show up for yourself in some way today. I know as a new parent, as a new mom, it can feel like it is impossible to take even 20 minutes for yourself. And some days it really genuinely does feel that way and some days it really will be that way. But please just remember to take moments and to take time for yourself. Everybody always says you cannot pour from an empty cup and I think that this of course applies to parenting as well. You want to show up as the best version of yourself every single day for your children. And I think that that can only happen if you check in on yourself, see how you're feeling, and make sure that even if it's something so small and it's not going away for a week on a vacation, even if it's something as small as shaving your legs in the shower, washing your hair, taking five minutes to journal, whatever it is, please just check in on yourself and do something for you because you want to show up as the best version of yourself for your child and you also deserve that time to yourself as well. And also here's a reminder, if you are a new parent and it doesn't feel like you are able to take that time for yourself, here is your reminder and that it will happen it is going to happen this time is temporary it is not going to last forever and I just try to remind myself that in tough moments to cherish these moments because I know they're not gonna last forever and I know that in five ten years from now I'm gonna miss these moments so I don't want to wish them away and with all that being said I'm going to wrap up the video here I hope you guys like this video if you did please make sure you go ahead and give it a big thumbs up you already know supports my channel if you haven't already make sure you subscribe hit that bell notification so you don't miss another video that I post if you haven't, make sure you follow me on my Instagram and TikTok so you can see other fitness, health, and lifestyle content I post on there. And I will catch you guys here next time.